Okay, so thanks everyone for joining us today. Uh, we're going to be looking at dissecting a real world ransomware attack. And uh, your presenters today are myself, Greg Edwards, uh, and Chris Hartwig, who is a senior security analyst with Watchpoint. Chris is in Miami, Florida, and I am in uh, sunny Cedar Rapids, Iowa. So the, the company that that we're talking about in this attack, and this was a, a real world attack that one of our resellers dealt with. Um, the client wasn't a Watchpoint client yet at the time, um, but it's a very ununique company and that's intentional. So this is an electrical supply company in Texas with 178 employees running uh, Windows 2008 server through 2016 servers using Office 365 for email, terminal server, uh, and then local and remote users. And, and we call this kind of an attack, a hack and attack. So what it is is where the attacker gets into the network and once they're, they're in, they create a backdoor uh, and then they unleash their attack, whether that, that may be exfiltrating data. Um, in this case, it was a ransomware attack. Then it, it got a little more interesting from there, from being just a normal ransomware attack, where they actually went and then deleted backups and ran a ransomware attack again. Um, and today, for today's demo, we're going to be using Kali Linux, um, but there's now uh, a smorgasbord of different uh, Linux distributions that are specifically built for penetration testing and for hacking. As you can see, the, the list actually runs off the page here. Um, and this attack that we're doing today starts as a phishing campaign and we'll walk you through exactly how their how the attacker got in and and honestly this is a very simple attack and again like the company not a unique company uh, this is a very simple kind of attack and what we wanted to demonstrate is just how not having a layered defense for cybersecurity allows even the simplest of attacks to get in. Uh, and so what, what Chris will be showing is how an attacker could use Kali um, to get a user to do something they never should do, um, but that happens every single day. And so, so that's what we wanna show is, is really how simple it is and how easy these tools are for attackers to use. So, so with that, I'll stop sharing my screen and let Chris take over to uh, to start the the dissection of the attack. Uh, Chris, yep, go ahead. Got it. Okay, you guys can hear me. Okay. Yep, we can hear you just fine. Great. Okay, so I have shared my screen. Uh, you should see my Cali box. Is that correct? Yep, and we have that that up right now. Perfect. Uh, and so, so Chris is going to go through this very quickly, um, and that's intentional. I'll go back once he's gone through and actually run the attack, then I'll go back and, and rewind that and show step by step what he did. So you can get a feel for how simple it is to use Kali and then see actually the steps that he goes through. Okay, sorry. Sorry to interrupt you, Chris. Go ahead. No worries. Excellent. Okay, so the first step is I'm just running a command to create a speedtest.exe executable file um, that will create a reverse TCP connection back to this server. So we've got the um, IP address and the port number. So I'll go ahead and hit enter there. This will take just a second. And this is actually, this is a completely live demo. So Chris is creating all of this on the fly. Um, and it's it's generating that speed test executable right now. Okay, so if I hit, hit a directory command, we can see it created speed test.exe. So I have a second terminal window open, um, and I have uh, MSF config pulled up, and we're just gonna go ahead and load the exploit. So I've got a few commands to run to get that accomplished. Chris, while you're doing that, I just wanted to mention um, everyone is on mute. I forgot to say this at the beginning. Um, we have everyone on mute, um, but you can at the bottom of your uh, meeting, 
you can, there's a chat window. If you would click in there and ask any, please ask any questions that you have, um, and then we'll, we'll go over those at the end. Okay, so just about show options. As you can see, this is live. <laughs> there we go, show options, and then we'll go ahead and run. Okay, so now I have the reverse TCP handler started. Okay, so I'm gonna connect over to the other TCP window and actually create the um, web address or the website and file or download downloadable link. Okay, so. Oops, index.ht. Oh, you still yeah, have I gotta spell it right. There you go. HT. So so what Chris is doing right here is actually creating the website. And this is a very, very simple website, but this is what will actually host that speed test file. And again, I'll I'll go through this um, just so you guys can see it in a step by step of, of exactly what he did here. Look here. So that's all that this um, all that the site is is just saying, hey, here's here's a file to run. Okay, and then next we just need to actually start the Python web server that will host that. Okay, and so now it's ready to, ready to go. So we should be able to go in and start our attack against our workstation. Okay, so at the workstation, I have a Windows 7 workstation here, and I've received an email, um, which I believe to be from Greg Edwards. Uh, the email just says that we're experiencing internet slowness. Uh, we're attempting to, de to determine whose station is causing the slowness. It asked me to click the link, download it, run it as administrator, um, and uh, to run a speed test and, and report back to Greg. So um, as an employee, I would go ahead and follow those instructions since it came from my boss. So let's go ahead and do that. Open link in the window. So here's the website that I created. Save that file. And now hopefully none of your users would actually follow these kind of instructions. Um, but as we all know, um, and in this, this attack that we're going through, they did. Um, it's not that hard to social engineer the users and and basically get them to do whatever you want uh, and really the the simpler the attack the more successful it would be will be so sorry to interrupt you there if you want to explain sure so at this at point now. yep at this point uh, we can see that I have created a session and I can actually start running commands on that on that system now so we can get some information about it <clears throat> I can see that it's uh, chwin72 is the name of it. It's a Windows 7 workstation. I can see how we were able to um, compromise the system uh, through a technique of name pipe impersonation. Um, I can see what permissions I have. So now at, at this point, Chris has complete control of that machine and the attacker is has the ability now he's he's loading PowerShell and essentially um, can do whatever whatever he wants okay here I am on the system you can see the directory where we downloaded speed test um, so at this point uh, it's transparent to the end user but we also downloaded um, a file called ransomware.ps1, which is the actual payload um, to run the encryption attack. So let's go ahead and, uh, yep, I got it. Get that kicked off. 
ransomware.ps1. And what I want to do is tell it what directory I want to attack on that workstation. So there is a directory called test data that we're going to encrypt. Okay, so let me review ransomware ps1 c test data two. Enter. Okay, so now at this point we can go over to that workstation and we can go to the test data two folder. And we can see that my files are being modified 881214. So it's actively running that ransomware attack on it right now as we speak. And I see we did get a, a pop up there. Uh, chat question. We'll, we'll get to those, those shortly. Okay, there we go. So it looks like it ran through them all and successfully encrypted all of the data. I'll go ahead and pass that back over to you, Greg. Uh, actually, Chris, I've, yeah. you're going to uh, delete the oh, shadow copies yes. too. Yes, I'm, I'm sorry. I should have done that first. I apologize. Let's um, go ahead and do that. <clears throat> okay, so I should have done this prior, but um, it really doesn't matter. We can do it afterwards as well. Uh, what I'm going to do is just delete the shadow copies so that this system couldn't be restored. So I just have some quick commands. I'll show the shadow copies. Using VSS yep. yeah, I should have uh, should have reminded you to do that. The attacker would want to do that before um, running the encryption. And actually, it really wouldn't matter because they're going to completely. I mean, there's not going to be any um, mm -hmm. any shadow copies left. So, so Oops. it really wouldn't matter if you ran it before or after. Yeah, not at all. So here's the uh, shadow copies that we have, and so I'm just going to run a command to actually delete all of them. Oops, gotta spell it right. Uh, and the the point of uh, showing this is is to see how simple this is. Um, these are very simple commands. Anyone that knows uh, knows a little about Kali knows uh, PowerShell. These kind of attacks are the simplest that are out there. Uh, and yeah, as you can see, so Chris with really, really one single command that delete shadows for all of C and do it quietly. Wiped out all of the, the local shadow copies. So, okay, yeah, if you wanna hand back over, Chris, I'll walk through the steps that you went through there. Okay. All right. So, so to explain a little bit about what Kali is, really there's, there's not anything that unique about Kali as, as it is in the, it's, it's just a Linux distribution, but what it does is it, it has all of these great hacking tools already installed on it. And what it was originally designed for is for penetration testers to use it to test, test systems, but Hackers are also using it now, um, and, and hackers typically will create their own Linux distributions and, and just use the tools that they, they want. But one of the most common is the Metasploit framework, um, and that's what this MSF Venom is using is Metasploit, and it allows to create exploit code so you can attack a remote machine, exactly what Chris did. Um, in this example, we're creating the speedtest.exe file, and then the next, so that, that once that file is created, then the next thing that Chris did is create a listener. So basically saying, okay, now when someone runs this, I want to know about it and wait for them. And this is, this is what's called a passive exploit. So this is creating a file and then waiting for the user to do something. And again, this is the, the most simplistic kind of attack that can be run. We've done other webinars where we show fileless malware attacks where there's not even a file and you're actually exploiting software. This isn't 
exploiting software at all. This is just exploiting the user. This is using reverse TCP, which is a component of Windows, to get the user to do something. Just like um, you guys have all probably used Team Viewer or Screen Connect or used Remote Event Viewer, those, those kind of tools are exactly what's being used here. We're getting the user to do something. Um, so, so once he's created that listener, then he's got to create a site for the user to go out and interact with. Because again, we've got to, in this kind of passive attack, we've got to get the user to do something and then we just wait for them. Uh, so that's that was creating the actual website that's gonna host the malicious file and then starting that web server. So Kali Linux has all of this built into it. So this was a fresh install that Chris went out and downloaded, completely open source tool here um, that Chris didn't modify at all, just used exactly what was there to, to run all of this. Um, and then in this step, he's, uh, he's hosting that, that web server and hosting that website. Uh, then we move on to the actual email. Looks like it's coming from the network admin um, and tells the user to run it as administrator. Um, absolutely not something you want your users to do and, and why we do user training, uh, but they do it all the time. Uh, so then, then the next step, you can see where the user actually ran it, and now um, Chris has access to that machine and can actually start running his malicious code. Um, and in the first case, he's running uh, the ransomware attack, um, and then and deleting the shadow copies. And again, there's that that highlighted line is how simple it is and how easy these commands are to go in and wipe out all of the shadow copies on that local machine. So, so now what? So the, the single user was attacked and the local IT team comes in to recover that machine. They ran an AV scan on that machine and didn't find anything. And again, the reason they're not going to find it is because that speedtest.exe is one, I mean, that is a unique file that Chris created on the fly just for this attack. And that is becoming the common theme now um, and something that we're seeing uh, and talking to people every day that are hit by attacks just like this, where whether they're using this simple of a technique or actually exploiting software to get in, um, it, it really doesn't matter. They're getting in and then attacking the machine. And now what, what Chris is gonna do is go on to round two. So that, that first demonstration was just the first step of what the attackers did. So Chris, if you want to uh, go on to round two. Okay, let me share my little share my nope, screen and I have to I have to stop sharing to let you have control there we go desktop one okay so you should see my Cali box again yep okay yep. so here we are back again um, we've started the reverse TCP handler and now we're going to compromise a second workstation uh, this workstation we're gonna compromise uh, we're gonna attack a um, network share so we're going to show you how we can how we can attack the, the workstation locally and also attack the network shares out there so let me go ahead and pull up my um, web page download the speed test so in, in the the example company that we're showing um, there were multiple users on the network that actually ran this, but the IT team had no way of knowing that. And Chris is going through uh, exactly what the attackers were doing. Really what they were doing by attacking that first machine was just creating a distraction. And so, so the, the real goal here was to attack the network uh, 
and distract. They they actually connected um, connected to the first machine, attacked it, and then now, as you can see, Chris is on a second machine and is going to uh, going to attack it. Okay, let's go ahead and load PowerShell and have at it. Load PowerShell. Load the shell, there we go, okay. PS1, and this time I'm going after a network share. So in the process of what the attacker can do, uh, you can imagine now that they're on the system, have PowerShell, I mean, they, they could install a VNC so they could actually run, run commands from a GUI and actually see what's out there um, and go laterally across the network. Um, and what Chris is doing here is now encrypting a network share, um, again, because he can do pretty much whatever whatever he wants across the network. So, okay, so um, we're not gonna spend a lot of time on this round two and I'll just explain a little about what, what that round two entailed. Um, really what it was, so it, so it was about creating a distraction so that they could go then attack the network. And so once they were on the system, they were on two machines, uh, they created a persistent connection through a simple task manager, that a task manager item that ran every day at 10.15 a.m. and it would just go and look, see if, if the speed test file was there, if it wasn't, download it again and run it. So every day at 10.15 they could come back and see if, if they were still connected. Um, and so the second round of attack, they actually went in and deleted the local backups from the server uh, and then attacked the network with the, the ransomware. And these are, these are the exact kind of attacks that we're seeing happening and that you see in the news. So um, there's a group out there called SamSam. Sam. Um, their MO is typically actually to do an active attack as opposed to a passive attack where they will brute force in. So a brute force attack is an active attack where they're actively going out and doing something. And in the, in the attack on Atlanta, um, they actually compromised RDP, which, you know, city of Atlanta certainly should not have had RDP ports open, but they brute forced through an RDP port, were on the network, um, were on the network for months and months, and ran ransomware attacks on five different internal departments and shut their, shut their entire system down for about two weeks while they were recovering. Um, so these are, these are very real world attacks that are happening. And, and in this specific, specific scenario, what does the IT team do? Because they don't have visibility. I mean, they, that first machine that was attacked, that was all for distraction purposes. And the IT team went to determine what happened, but couldn't. And so they rebuilt that machine. There were no shadow copies, so they just re-imaged it. Well, now you've had a second attack and you still don't know what's happened. And so what do you do? Well, what most companies are still doing today is to reinstall all the machines. So Maersk, the world's largest shipping company, re-imaged 45,000 PCs and 4,000 servers after the NotPetya attack. So they, they didn't know where it was and where it wasn't, and they just wiped everything out. And that's, that's a typical kind of reaction to this type of an attack. So, um, so with that, hopefully we've, we've been able to demonstrate how, how these attackers are getting in, how they're using Kali Linux to, to do it. Um, and we'll take some questions. And the last thing we're gonna do, we're gonna run another attack. Um, Chris is, is setting that up now to actually 
run it and show one of our products um, stopping an attack with Crypto Stopper. So I know um, I know that we had some questions. Sean, have you? Um, if you could uh, jump in and and help us to answer those, or ha ask the questions, and we'll yeah. answer them. Yep. <laughs> Looks like um, Steve has asked, uh, "Can't you just block PowerShell?" Mm. So great question, and absolutely. So um, so as part of a layered defense, one thing you would want to do is to um, actually several things that this company hadn't done. Um, not allow PowerShell to run. But the thing about just blocking PowerShell is that these attacks can run from any kind of script. So it could be VB script, it could be JavaScript, it could be almost any, could be command line, which again, you could block that. Um, but the point being, can you block everything? The answer is no. I mean, you can't block everything. And I know, um, you know, so we block PowerShell and don't have admin rights on our local machines. Um, but I, I, and this is this is admitting maybe a little more than I want to, but I um, gave myself admin rights because I kept getting pop-ups um, just a couple of days ago for an application that I needed to run. And every time it would run, it would give me the pop-up I put in the password. So I disabled it. And a lot of times what happens is you have that security creep where you'd go and either an individual user or an admin will go and turn something off knowing, oh, I'm just going to leave that off for a couple of days to make this easier to run. Well, then it doesn't, because there's not good change management in place, they don't go back and do it. So, so as part of a layered defense system, absolutely turn off PowerShell. Don't let the users run that. Um, in this attack scenario, just taking away admin privileges and forcing um, forcing a username password to run something as an admin would have stopped it. Lots of things that could have stopped it, but lots of things that companies just aren't doing. So any other, any other questions? Uh, yes, we've got one from Jill. What antivirus or firewalls uh, would you recommend for, for stopping an attack like this? Yeah, so, so there are some next-gen AV products out there that will help to stop these kind of attacks but um, so ones that we would recommend would be Silence, um, Sophos, Carbon Black are three good next-gen AV tools um, that may may or may not be able to stop an attack like this. It probably would stop this very simplistic kind of attack um, but again we to today what we were showing was this super simple kind of attack. Um, we've done these webinars in the past where we show uh, fileless malware attacks where everything is running through uh, through VB script or through PowerShell uh, and they're completely not detectable. Um, and we wanted to show wanted to show how the most simple kinds of attacks are happening and how easy that is for attackers and, and really why we're having the rampant problems that we're having because so many companies are not doing the basics, let alone using more advanced tools like we create at Watchpoint. Uh, so that was kind of a long-winded answer. <laughs> no, any, any, other, uh, any other questions? Uh, it looks like we do have one more. Uh, thank you, Wes. How frequent have these, these hacking attacks become? Uh, you hear about ransomware and crypto mining in the news. Uh, how would it compare? Yep, yep. So, so on a daily basis, so we have a chat window that we allow people to, to come in and ask questions on our site. Every single day, we are getting questions from people that have been attacked and what they can do after the fact. And obviously we can't, we can't help much after the fact. Um, we do have a page that has decryptors of decryptions that people can actually run to decrypt ransom files. Um, but they're not, I mean, generally they're not created. The decryptors aren't created yet. So, um, so it's very common. I don't have specific stats. I mean, I've heard that the FBI is saying every four seconds that someone is hit, some company, not just individuals, but a company is hit by ransomware. Um, so between that and then our own anecdotal data of just seeing how many questions we're getting on it, a lot. So a lot is my answer <laughs> of how often. And, and we are seeing 
much more frequently where rather than just being a, a specific ransomware attack that runs from a, a file, um, that it is actually a hack and attack where they are connecting in and then determining what they want to do and running the attack. Oh. All right, okay. any other? Uh, looks like that's it at the moment. If, if uh, anyone else has a question, feel free to use again the chat um, window at the bottom of your screen. All right, and Chris, if you want to uh, want to show um, show an attack. Okay, yep, so I'm gonna go ahead and attack a workstation that we have protected uh, by Crypto Stopper. Uh, so I have Crypto Stopper running on the desktop. <clears throat> so we're just gonna go through the same process. I've created the reverse TCP handler on my Kali box. I'll go to the Windows system and we're going to download that file. Oops. Save it. Run as admin. Okay. Okay, so now I have my reverse connection. And I can run my commands. Perfect. Okay. So I'm just going to load PowerShell. Whoops, I got to type load. Load. PowerShell. PowerShell shell. Okay, I'm on the system again. Ransomware PS1. Okay, and this is gonna be a local attack, so I'm attacking C test data two. <clears throat> okay, let me review dot ransom ransomware.ps1 C test data two. Okay, so this is gonna start the ransomware attack on um, this workstation, CH171. So let's go ahead and take a look. And bam, there we go. So this says the process speedtest.exe exhibited ransomware behavior was this you. Uh, you can see that the, the process has suspended. Everything has been suspended in the background while I um, give this attention. So it was not me. I'm going to say no. It will kill that process. And if I take a look at task manager, you can see speedtest.exe is no longer running. And that's it. We've stopped the ransomware attack. Detected and stopped the ransomware attack. All right, I'll so pass it back to you. All right. So, so what Chris was showing there, um, and today was was meant to be educational and not uh, not a sales not a sales uh, webinar. So we wanted to just quickly show how one of our tools could do it without again without being salesy, but just doing a little presentation on it. And you could run that uh, whether it be from a server or from a desktop, and you saw how quickly. Uh, how quickly that attack was stopped, and it was less than less than a second. Uh, so, the the point of today was to show everyone that without without advanced systems and without complete visibility to the network, as network admins, you're you're just blind to what's happening on the network. You can't rewind and see what's happened. So you could, A, learn from it and clean up, um, stop these attacks before they happen, um, rather than recovering after the fact and know exactly what happened. So you need tools that give you complete visibility that show and record all the file activity, all the process activity, um, all of the network activity. You wanna see if your users are connecting to anything malicious and stop them. Um, and you, you really can't do that without advanced tools. So I'd like to thank everyone for coming today. Um, we are hosting an event for those of you that are local. Um, I know we had some international participants, so you're not trapped, probably not